Researchers here at Stanford now have a better idea of why it's so hard to treat eating disorders. Eating disorders like bulimia nervosa, binge eating, it all has to do with brain power, not willpower. So tell me what was the point of your study? We were very interested in learning what about the brain might be implicated in people who are engaging in binge eating. Binge eating is basically when people are engaging in um, eating a large amount of food and feeling a loss of control, like they just couldn't stop if they wanted to. When people are experiencing uh, binge eating, they can experience a lot of guilt and shame. It's something that they are not able to just stop. So we were curious about how the brain might be implicated in some of this behavior. And so we recruited women who were engaging in recurrent binge eating so that we could try and see what aspects of the brain might relate to their eating. And then what did you find? We found that the circuitry and the connections between the brain were implicated and related to binge eating these yellow fibers are those connections in the brain. And what they are doing is they're connecting this brain structure in the center of the brain, the deep part of the brain called the putamen. It's connecting it to this, what we call the sensory motor cortex, part of the brain where we take action and take in information. And that connection between the putamen and that sensory motor cortex was altered in a certain way in the women who were engaging in recurrent binge eating. You found the part of the brain where habits are formed that could determine why it's so hard to treat eating disorders. These are parts of the brain that we know are related to um, how we develop habits. And habits are just things that we do automatically. So the question was, is binge eating somehow similar to a habit in that way. The idea that there would be a habit-related process going on in the brain could help us understand a little bit of how we might intervene and address both the habit formation of like, when does it even start? And then also, once that habit has formed, what could we do to try to interrupt it? So where do you go from here, knowing this information? How do you treat eating disorders in the future? we have to disrupt something in that brain circuit so we can do stimulation directly on those brain circuits and hopefully see if we can directly um, impact and, and lessen the, the degree of that circuitry and reduce that automatic response. Another option that I practice often is through psychotherapy. And I work closely with my patients to see how we can do repeated behavior change and over time start to actually alter the brain circuitry through that repeated behavior. It's one of the great things about our brains is that they're somewhat plastic. And so what that means for us is that just because this is the way the circuit exists today doesn't mean it has to be that way forever. So this also clears up the misconception that somehow you're to blame for your eating disorder when it's really your brain that gets the blame. Exactly, yes. There is so much guilt and shame, and the guilt and shame itself can prevent people from even seeking help. If anything, I would love for this study to give that message to folks that this is not your fault, that it's not something to feel guilt and shame about, and instead is something that you know we can help with. So instead of humiliation, there's hope. Exactly.